Hello and welcome, as it is the evening time of Christmas Day, the 25th day of December 2018. My name is Derek and welcome to the Money Charts channel. All bets and of the like within each his own risk and their own reward. Go over Bitcoin, Theta, Pivex, Komodo, a couple, Aid I'm going to go over as well, Aid Coin, and uh, maybe a couple other ones. I'm going to talk about uh, an interesting story and where I did very good at the start of my execution and not so good near the end as the World Junior Hockey Tournament starts in about uh, a day from now and I'm going to talk about that. All right then. So within Bitcoin, daily chart, I got the Fibonacci lines that I drew in several days ago as it was starting its rally. And within it, it's uh, one, two days resisting it here, another one in here on the 4100 mark. Today's uh, low is in at 3,676, which would be, uh, it's pretty much ahead of this level. We see it on the hourly time frame last night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. The market broke down from the uh, 4,000 and low change area, dropping down, of course, to the 37. And since then, it has just maintained itself going sideways through that of uh, time, having a spot now trying to break out and support where it came from. So far, it's holding and staying above uh, where we're on the 3762 handle. As there's your breakout to this point, can it hold here, lift higher? I don't know. We'll wait and see. But that's uh, pretty much all I want to talk now about Bitcoin for at least this current time frame. And let's talk next about Theta. Theta's in at uh, 12.78. Looking at this in the 15, but uh, let's take a look at this on the daily term first. And I put some lines in. And these lines are to indicate my next buy and sell orders for I'm really down to three coins on Binance, not not including the Binance coin, not including Bitcoin, and not including the true US dollar hedge coin, but Theta, PivX, and that of uh, Komodo. So therefore, the 13, well, the 1100 level is a previous low. And we've seen how it's uh, managed to make a break above this uh, consolidation period back into it. If it fails, the most minimum that it's going to lose is a play down to 1100. Now the orders has been a problem and I uh, will show an example of uh, what the case is for why. As uh, this is uh, this is the site and here's a spot where I had 225 Komodo and about almost one quarter of a Bitcoin available to me at this time. So uh, maybe I want to put some orders in, but that's the bid and the ask price as we can see at a given time. There's the chart that it had. I had no open orders at all for it, but we uh, can see on the left side, there's that number eight, which meant there were eight open orders on a different trading pair cross. So I decided, okay, well, let's just put some orders in on the market. And first off, you put a buy order in and around 1800 would have been the level that I went. So I put in a whatever amount. First I put, I put 25 in and then the buy order comes in. And what are you, I'm putting three orders in mainly. Like I got one around 18, then maybe one at around like, tw I mean, I don't got the thousand maybe one at about 15 or 14, 1300 area, and then one for about a 10X move for about 200 Satoshi, but there was another buy order placed. With 225 PIVX available. So I put some sell orders in, we got 24, uh, uh, the 25 Satoshi uh, handle, or the 25, 1000. So there's a buy order there that was placed. Putting in another order in, selling half, which was 100 at that time around 85 so when scrolling back down to the bottom I can see I got two buy orders and two sell orders and now 12 orders with the eight that I had before and then the four that were added so the ways far I just clicked on that I'm across I have no involvement in at all no no holdings of waves no trades on it right now or no orders rather so I decided, okay, well, let's just put a buy order in. The price is 8,600 at the time. 
So let's put in one for a little over the 5,000 handle. And uh, then you put the buy order in, everything's good. There we go, it's executed. I don't have any ways I couldn't put a sell order in, but that wasn't what the point was. And then put another buy order in for 2,100. And there we go, that was executed, which there's the two orders in place. Now, if I ever want to cancel all of the orders for that crossing, I would push the cancel all button on the right hand side, which should only cancel the ones for that cross. So there goes the two waves orders. And if we scroll on to the left hand side, what we're going to see is that I am out of open orders. They are uh, all gone. So what was going on was I'd have the crossing of Ethereum versus Litecoin and I canceled all the orders that way, put new ones in, and then I noticed maybe a little while later that I uh, had no orders, or only had like maybe eight or nine that I just put in. I couldn't understand why. And having several dozen coins, just putting all the orders in, that, that took a decent amount of time. And then it happened again. I'm like, well, why, why did this go on? I'm, I've never, ever, man, oh crap, I actually pushed cancel all with everything showing or I didn't have that check mark I've never done that I couldn't understand so I mean that there goes an hour and a half of my day having to put the orders in again and then I thought for a second is there some sort of computer program script error where if I push I can't it's just always going to do that then I seen I had like 200 and plus orders in and I pushed I canceled that button like I shown and I seen it go to zero and I was not impressed so therefore, that's why I got to keep the orders in small in case I accidentally remove all the orders. I want to make sure I only have a small amount of trading pairs so that it doesn't take me as long to put them in. So that's unfortunate that it came down to that. So then, yes, yeah, so Theta, I'll be looking to buy at this lower level of about 1100. I think that's a very conservative level. But if it goes to 1100, I'm buying. If it goes lower, I'm buying some more. And I got a sell order in, uh, place in at 13.49. Looking at it amongst the uh, single hour, let's do four hour term time frame, that uh, represents this uh, previous level of support. Again, this is I think a lower price point. I think coming up to this area, 13.75 could easily be hit, but I'd rather take the safer sell option. So moving on next to Wodu PIVX, while we're here, the red indicates Binance. Is there a uh, arbitrage available, 2021, 2044? Maybe you can pick away at a percent if you can buy at the 2020 and sell at the 20 and a 45 level. Not worth my time to try and do such. And within here, my buy orders and sell orders are set. I've also set myself just in case something like this is to happen again then I'm gonna get myself some buy orders in place I got a buy order back where it came from in this little area here 18 average of highs and if it's gonna break I want to break on a sell of that resistance point looking at this on uh, it's a decent size leg from this point on here again I think it's relatively conservative if we looked at 27 and a half on say the Bittrex one, which doesn't have that spike below. And we'll do the daily chart. Getting above this level of resistance. I don't know why it's not scrolling well for me. There we go. So to me, up in here is a very conservative level. If it breaks this resistance, I really got to think that it's going to come closer to the 30 handle rather than that of the 27. But if I sell at 27, where am I going to be looking to sell again? Probably again at 34 and then just higher and higher depending on of course what the message of the market would be uh, telling me. So that is the PIVX trade and this is a coin I think is going to do long term well so that's why I'm deciding to stick with it. 1850 and 18 and two thirds is a difference of the two Komodos so again there's uh, no arbitrage available as far as the uh, the market is concerned and where I'm looking to be placing orders well here's how it stands 
once again looking at the 18 average of lows looking for the break of this level if it goes lower breaking out above this high that's a previous congestion area at around 2146 so that's generally well, that's just where my next buy and sell orders are so unless I see that one of these lines on the three co coins get hit or an arbitrage is available on either Komodo or uh, PivX then there's no need to even log on to the site because I know those are the only orders that I would have. Let's talk about the aid coin next available on Bittrex. And I got into this as it was falling down in here at around 650 Satoshi, 600 and maybe a little higher than that. So I'm up about 7, 8% as I should be when you have situa situations like moves up here coming back to uh, where it came from and uh, yeah I even sold up here I got this sell order here so I would have bought in, in probably down in here somewhere at the 630 640 mark and then I hit this decline didn't do anything sold up here then I would have bought back in here bought some more on the way down did a bunch of selling up here buying back here selling up here and I uh, don't, don't remember if I've bought back yet or not. Either way, that's not important because I either have a buy order down here. And oftentimes, what I notice with the Bittrex site, and this to me, I think is a, actually an advantage within their 28-day order removal. When you look at the bid-ask ratios, you're going to notice that once the bids are like lower than like two, 300, I mean, there's like nothing below 300 on many of them. So to stick in bids of like 40 Satoshi on something that's 600, especially on the ones that don't trade as big, like the Litecoins or the NEMs or the Ripples that don't trade at high volume, or they're nowhere near as massive volume, rather, that these moves can become available where maybe you can get one of those major spikes in either direction. Same is true on the upside as far as putting in some more aggressive bets. So that can work out very well. And as far as my strategy, everything that I have is always worth that of X units. So we'll just put the number one in. And therefore, if it's going up, market goes higher, maybe this would be worth, say, 1.25 because it goes up 25%. Well, now I can sell this 2.5 off of the market, make it back worth eight, and then I'll quote unquote pocket the Bitcoin. Maybe this market goes down 20% and it's worth 0 0.0880. Then I'll buy 0 0.2 worth and make it worth one again. And yes, the orders are removed every 28 days. But the way I look at it is if a market and I'm if a market can't move in a, that type of volatility, like 15, 20, 20, whatever percent on the up or down side in a four week period, then you're playing a coin of very low volatility or was in an extreme rare position. Also that it's very rare that I'm going to have to have those orders even last that long because if a buy or sell comes up, let's just assume I enter this now. I'm going to look at the bid and ask and see where wall, where buy and sell blocks are. Meaning, let's assume that around, I buy it at 608, let's assume around 500, there's a big buy order there. Then I might put a buy order in at 501 or 502. Same thing on the upside, if I see there's a big sale at say 750 and, someone's, and there's another big one at 755, then I'm going to go a little south of that number. But in that general rule, I'm going to have, uh, if it's 608, maybe I see that wall block and I'll put a buy order in for 500. And then as I mentioned about the cheap ones, maybe I'll put a buy order for 20 Satoshi or 10 Satoshi or even three or four. There's a lot of really low ones I got in on the just in case situation. So then you put the sell orders in and uh, three of them can often work very well for the just in case situations. As you got to say, I put a sell order in at say 744. And just in case this thing goes wild high over a period of like five minutes or a few hours when I'm not able to be at the computer. If it does, I want to make sure I can pick away at a sale. So maybe I'll even put a big level in, maybe at around 1250-ish or so. And then sell. 
And for example, if say I'm worth one, I want it to be worth one unit. Well, in this spot, if say selling a hundred, say selling, uh, I don't know, thirty percent of my coins would do it, or thirty-five, I would do a bit more. So I would bring it down to say 0 0.9, 0 0.95 kind of deal because most likely it's going to be one of those that's uh, going to come into place. So that's ooh, that would look that. So 1250 would be the medium sell order, and then I just put an insane number in, maybe 45,000, and sell the rest there. Just sell them all, and of course you're going to probably get one of these things if something like that were to happen, which is fine with me, only price pays. So therefore, either this one or this one was going to hit next, which means if that's the case, I'm going to delete all the orders, although I can keep this one alive, and then do it again. So if I buy at 500, let's put a buy order in at maybe 400, then let's put a sell order in at 629 or 644, and then again at a thousand, and then again at about forty thousand, and I'll just always redo the orders amongst that level. So the chances that twenty-eight days will go by, and neither the buy or the sell will be activated, becomes very low. And again, if it happens, well, low volatile times, or you're playing the wrong coins. And next other coin that I'm in is, uh, and I don't get a sell order in here. These are just numbers that I have. I'm, I might have one in that area. But I did the exact same thing that I'd mentioned where I have a buy order somewhere down here, maybe at around 85 or something. I think it is around 85 actually. And then I have an insane one really, really low. So I'd have a sell order somewhere up here and then way up again and way up again after that. But when I notice situations like these uh, highs moving as they do, I think that's, uh, th I like those moves. And as far as the market's concerned, it's been in a sideways manner. It's, it's neutral within this. It hasn't gone up or down. But as I look at it, this is almost like a trade-off. I exit out of one position into another. And I have no actual, not care, but affiliation with any of these coins these are all trading vehicles for the purpose of increasing my base currency in this case bitcoin and the game yes game of crypto trading games have scores and numbers oh this is totally a numbers game and then some and the score is how many of the, your base currency, your Bitcoins, Litecoins, Ethereums, Binance coins, Tethers, whichever currencies you're using, how many of them do you have, how much they're worth, another form of the game. And you can play the game and do things like uh, well, buy real gold and silver with it because you can literally buy it with, uh, with Bitcoin and all that stuff. Pal Network, I'm into this one as well, it's a new one. Uh, one hour term time frame, let's just even go to four. And uh, decent size moves back and forth, but uh, again, just getting into another different coin. I like how this is making higher lows amongst this level of resistance. And I mean, it's it could very easily break down from here and then test this low and then break lower and be 40 and 30 Satoshi. I realize that risk reward management. Well, it could also break out above this level of resistance and enter into some positive areas up here. Overall, my Litecoin, or Litecoin, not Litecoin, altcoin holdings from the event of realizing that uh, the orders are not as fun on uh, Binance overall is down a little bit because I've only, I've, for every four units that I've sold on Binance, I've maybe picked up two and a half to three on either that of uh, Bitrex or uh, Poloniex. So therefore, I'm holding not really cash, but Bitcoin in case the markets go down. I got buy orders ready to go for codes like OK Cash. I'm, I don't own that. But if it goes down more, I will because I got buy order in place. Mercury has another one I got a buy order in for as well. So OK Cash, this is a spot where on the weekly time frame, and I put these numbers in a long time ago. Uh, it's already slipped to this uh, 757 
and just supporting this 349 just magnificently. But I got, uh, it's not a deep order, it's more like uh, like somewhere down in here. I've already, I mean, I can't even tell you the number. It's based on where the bids are. Again, I'm looking to see where buy blocks and wall blocks are, and I got it in what I consider the most optimal position. It's been in for a couple days and it hasn't hit yet. So that is generally it. Uh, again, codes like burst I've entered, entered in on this. And even stuff like a lot of these coins, I'm not even trading against Bitcoin. Zen, Strat, XZC. These are coins that I'm uh, moving against Litecoin, but I'm still going to have it viewed upon here along the way. I'm no longer trading this, but I'm still going to keep a view of how the Litecoin and Ethereum uh, cross is going to play. If it's making a head and shoulders pattern, maybe it's done the uh, formation of the head. And I mean, all oh, whatever when it comes uh, down to that. Breakout is something that I entered into, I think, today. But uh, we can see here in the daily term time frame, nice little well, breakout, I guess, back down to the correctionary area and uh, a lot of wild movements back in the past. If it can show anything like this again, that would be just super fantastic. But when these things are ready to go, I know they can explode really fast and this thing going up to the three, four, five, six, seven handle isn't that big of a surprise and technically and mathematically speaking getting up to these previous resistance and new highs not going to say is favored or even likely but in the realm of possibilities because that's what markets do on a bullish and bearish level is well break highs and break lows so whether it's ready to go and get and, and have a big move maybe but if all the cryptos have another leg lower i'm doing what i do always have my buy orders ready and I'll be adding it to extra coins if there's another leg lower because I'll have uh, quote unquote cash again available from the covering of the Bitcoins or buying Bitcoin f for that of TUSD. And in such, I'm going to be looking for uh, a sell order. I'm, I'm looking for that to go to about uh, close to 40,000, selling about 75% at about 38,000 and about. Uh, the remainder at 50,000. Let me just bring in that uh, final one. If it doesn't hit there, then markets are going to go up. I'm fine with it. But this is the uh, inverse to Bitcoin. And uh, because it just pierced below, in this case, the 33, I've removed orders in that area. And thus, I'm now going for about 38,000, which is the equivalency of about 25, 2600 Bitcoin, and then uh, that of about uh, 50,000 would work out to about 2000 or so Bitcoin. And uh, that's how I'm looking towards such. I wish, of course, that uh, this wouldn't have pierced as it does. But uh, the market does what the market does. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye bye.